Now today, uh, we we uh, have to worry um, that the Millennium Development Goals, which we are so strongly committed to, are threatened, um, and they are threatened by a series of crises that we're all aware of. The, the, the picture today has been mixed. On the one hand, um, we probably will be close globally to reaching that um, halving of poverty, and there are about 500 million um, that uh, that have gone um, uh, that have that have gone uh, above the target. So the number has decreased from 1.9 billion to 1.4 billion. But that global figure marks these very serious discrepancies, and in particular the situation in sub-Saharan Africa, where the number has gone up from 200 million in volume terms to some 400 million. But um, clearly. Uh, uh, the trajectory that we were on, um, which, which was a mixed one, is now in itself um, under threat. The consequence of the food prices uh, are well known. Some estimates put the number that will come down under the target again to over um, 100 uh, million. Um, the oil prices have had huge cumulative effects, um, which, again, you're all aware of. The sheer volatility of the current situation is something which sometimes is not fully appreciated. We have a situation where in one or two days the price of a barrel of oil changes by the amount that an entire barrel actually cost only five or ten years ago. It goes up and down by thirty dollars every you know uh, in, in a couple of days quite easily. How finance ministers and planning ministers in small, least developed countries are supposed to cope with that kind of volatility um, is, is really almost beyond um, imagination. And now we have to worry about the financial um, consequences of potential recessionary tendencies in a number of countries. Um, I don't want to say recession, none of us want to say recession, but clearly the movement is not going in the right direction. And the consequences of this for the least developed countries are huge. And, and, uh, and you know, the, 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 con the consequences back at home, if I may say so, pale in significance, um, although they're very serious, compared to the consequences for people that are living on a dollar a day. Uh, when you have a situation um, with, um, with uh, significantly decreasing foreign direct investment potentially, decreasing remittances, uh, hopefully not, but potentially uh, affecting ODA flows in some countries. Um, the impact of this on inflationary situations and on the fiscal situation of these countries is very, very serious. Uh, I've seen the many numbers, uh, just to cite one in Bangladesh today, um, one reads that there's potentially a 50% cut in uh, spending on education that comes as a consequence of the uh, implications for the economy. This is all further compounded by the uh, extraordinary challenges of climate change and the extraordinary effects of climate change on the poorest countries again, um, and, uh, and, and again further compounded by the current uh, stalled, let's call it stalled, um, Doha trade round and the effects again on the very poor who had hoped that this would be the successful development plan that, um, that had been um, promised. It's so important in a time like this when there are so many pressures at home to remember um, the, the people in the end that will pay the highest price for the problems generated um, uh, in the North the people that will pay the highest price are the ones that can least support it. They are the very poorest, and they will be hit uh, most directly. And that's why this is most certainly not the time uh, to turn inwards and to become introverts. And yet, historically, that is so often uh, what happens and so often the, um, the reaction. So this is the time, I think, um, as we're talking about partnerships, to reaffirm the tremendous importance today of international partnerships, and, um, and uh, international partnerships is another way of also talking about multilateralism. And I don't obviously have time to talk to go at a great length, but what is very clear 
about the current situation is that none of the crises that I've referred to today, this evening, none of those crises can be resolved unilaterally. Whether you look at the responses on the food crisis, whether you look at the whole issue of climate change, uh, whether you look at trade, even when you look at the issue of dealing with conflict and post-conflict situations in, in black states uh, in the world, um, these are not situations, they're not solutions which can be resolved outside of some kind of multilateral um, framework. And what's so important in this is that in these cases, multilateralism is the option, is the hard choice. It's the option of choice for most governments when they look at their options. I think that one of the problems that we suffer from in the debate about multilateralism is that intuitively it seems to be the kind of soft option. It's the option that you do if you're being generous, or it's the option that you do if it's not a core national interest that's involved. The crises of today make it clear that that is not the case, that for many of these fundamental central points, um, it is uh, multilateralism which is going to get us to the, to the other side of the problem, and multilateralism is actually the hard choice. One final point that I would like to make uh, which circles back to the beginning in a way. When we talk about multilateralism, uh, I think that there's a lot to be said for being imaginative and maybe more radical in, in what a new or what a reinvigorated multilateralism might look like. Um, there is the assumption that when we talk about multilateralism, we talk exclusively about the relationships of states and the way nation states talk to each other. And of course, that this does need to remain the anchor and a fundamental part of a multilateral arrangement. But as we saw earlier, it is in these expanding networks of whether it's legislators or judicial um, authorities, whether it's the private sector or civil society, uh, whether it's, it's women's groups uh, or, uh, or a whole slew of other specific practice uh, communities, I think that, um, that their ability to interact and to contribute to this emerging new multilateralism is going to be a, um, a fundamental part of, of where we're going to go. So I would end with the thought that the lessons about partnership that we have learned at the national level that I started to talk about, I think that those lessons are, are, are things, are, are, are issues that, um, that we're going to begin to have to look at very seriously when we look at what it means to have a vibrant new multilateralism in the future. Thank you.